What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to introduce you to my entire digital illustration process from rough sketch to the final digital illustrated piece. So the first thing I do is draw it. So I'm going to take this little bunny drawing and I'm going to draw her as if she were one of my original characters. And I'm going to do that with pen and ink and not color it. The next thing I'm going to do is take a clear picture of the finished drawing and airdrop it to my computer because I'm going to use Adobe Illustrator to turn it into a vector image. Now that we're in Illustrator, I'm going to click Image Trace and that'll transform my image into a vector image which I can then turn into line work. Then I'll click Expand so that way I can take out the white parts of the image so I can have just line work. I also throw a little background behind it so I know I got rid of all the white parts. And I don't use a specific color when I do this, just any color other than black or white. Now that that's done, I'm going to export the image as a PNG so that there's again no background and just line work. And now it's time to take the image into Procreate. So first I'm going to open a new document and upload my line work to it. Sometimes the line work comes towards the edge, so sometimes I have to extend the size of the canvas. Now I'm going to fix the line work. What I mean when I say fix the line work is when I upload the actual drawing to Adobe Illustrator, it makes some lines look jagged, anything but smooth lines. When you look at it for the first time, the lines look clean, but when you take a closer look, there appears to be some lines that don't look smooth. So that's when I use a digital brush to help fix those lines. First, on the original layer, I'm going to use my eraser tool and get rid of all the lines that I don't like. Parts of the piece I'm making super thin, but in the next stage of the process, we'll be able to fix that. Now that that's done, I'm going to make a new layer and begin to fix the lines. I like to either do that or fix the line work all in one layer. The reason is because I don't want to have an extra struggle of having to switch back and forth between layers if I need to erase the parts that I miss. And with that, I can add lines to either layer. And now comes my favorite part of the process, and that's adding color. An easy way for me to color is to make a clipping mask layer. When you make a clipping mask layer, you're able to color inside that area without worrying about going outside the lines. To make this easy, I'm going to select my line work layer and also select the areas that are inside it. Then on a separate layer, I'm going to take a brush that's large in size and make it any color you want, and then fill in that entire layer. And now your clipping mask is created. Now on a new layer, I'm going to first tap the thumbnail and click clipping mask. And anything on this layer is white, which includes the eyes and the teeth that are being shown. Now I'm going to make another clipping mask layer, and this one is for the rest of the colors in the piece. And I'm going to use a previous drawing I made last summer for color reference. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'd know that I posted some fan art for Space Jam 2, which came out last summer. So if you haven't seen that, I got it up on the screen right here. And the image that I'm creating today will be somewhat similar, and most of it will incorporate the same colors. For the rainbow pattern I'm about to add, here's how you do it. First, I'm going to select an area that I want it in. Then with a certain brush, I'm going to begin adding one strip of the pattern to the shirt. Now I'm going to duplicate that layer and make it a bit smaller so that it's the same shape that goes around the strip that we just added but we're also going to change the color of it. To do that, I'm going to use the magic wand tool up here, then playing around with the hue, saturation, and brightness settings until I get the orange that I want. And I'm going to do the same for the yellow strip. And once I'm done with all three, I'll combine all three layers if I'm satisfied. Then I'm going to create a layer underneath for the background color that'll be behind that rainbow pattern on the shirt. 
which takes no time at all. Just fill in that small area. Then combine it with the rainbow pattern and that completes the coloring process. Now we're gonna start adding shades. For the shades, I like to use black and fill it in. So on a new layer, I'm going to use a black and add it onto the face. Then double tap that same layer to reduce the opacity of it to around 20 to 30%. Now it looks like it's more colors being used to shade when we really just use black. But you may notice that I'm applying shading as if the light source is behind the character. Well, later on, it will be. When I finish with the illustration, I'm going to add a backdrop to the piece, which will pose as a light source. That way it'll make sense with the way I'm putting in my shades. And here's what the shade layer looks like when it's opaque. And now here's what it looks like with the opacity at 20%. Now since this character has hair, we're going to repeat the same process but with a white. So on a new layer, I'm going to add shine to the hair, adjust the shape so there are triangles on both sides, both different sizes though, with a few lines that are supposed to pose as strands of hair in a way. Then later reducing the opacity of that layer so that the white can show us a light variation of that hair color. The best part about this is that it can work for any color, and this applies to shades as well. Now to help show viewers where the light source is, I like to add an opaque highlights around the character. On a new clipping mask layer on top of everything, begin to, begin to go around everything that will get hit with light. It just adds a little touch to the piece. Now we're almost finished, but now I'm going to add some lines to the basketball and small circles for the pupils. It's easy to add lines because all I can do is create a new layer on top of the lock line work layer and add lines from that. And then if I want, I can just combine those two layers together. Then after all that is complete, I'm going to add a layer that's on top of everything, including the line work, and add some shine to the eyes. The reason it's above everything is because I want it to overlap the line work, and it poses as a finishing touch to the piece. All that's left to do is add a background. Now let's add a layer underneath everything. And just like the other piece I showed you earlier, we're gonna add a gradient. But before we do, I'm gonna change the background color to a yellow. And now with a large brush, I can begin adding shades to that background gradient layer. Then when I'm going to add the magic wand icon, I tap Gaussian blur and blur everything in that layer so that the colors all blend with each other and all blend with the yellow background color. Then to help separate all the brightness, I make a new layer and use a Nico brush tool and just scribble zigzag lines around the character while using a dark bluish color. Of course you can use any other color that you like but I choose to use this dark blue color. Then adding another layer, use a white or any other color that you might like and use the bubble tool. I make this bubble brush small and I scribble in places around the subject that probably won't be seen. And then I make the brush bigger and run the brush around everything else. And that completes the illustration. And as an artist, I like to create a watermark for my artwork. And here's how you do it. So you go to the wrench tool in the top corner, hit add, and then add text. And then I type in my screen name, Cadillac Cartoons, and then I change it to a white color. And I also change the font to match the font that I use for my channel. Then once that text is white, I go to that layer, I double tap it, and I reduce the opacity of it. So it's not going to be ultimately visible, but at least it sits on top of the artwork so no one can copyright it. And just to be extra, I'm going to add Cartoon Squad to her outfit so that she's a part of the Cadillac Cartoon Squad. And if you want to be a part of the Cartoon Squad as well, make sure you like and comment on this video if you enjoy the content today. And be sure to subscribe to my channel and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I got my nigga like